Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, and everyone uh, for organizing today the program for our meeting. Every, I was very much impressed by the uh, attendance. So uh, now I will not uh, speak wrong. Okay, just uh, I speak 30 minutes. And rather, after that, I, I will question and answer for what I like to have you a question. So, uh, so uh, please, uh, uh, this time I thought that uh, uh, three parts I consider. One is the uh, historical aspect, it means that the ancient, from ancient to modern. And then, seventy years of the And then today's situation. But I understand everyone is interested in today's situation. But to understand the today's situation, I think it's very important to know also the history. Because uh, as uh, the Narayana said, the perception is very important. How we see uh, each other. So this is not just today, but in uh, our very uh, in uh, idea how we view India. It's not to just to develop in these three years, five years, ten years. So deep rooted. So this is why I thought that the, so first and I just quickly mention ancient how Japan viewed India, okay, till recently. Please. And then back to the introduction of the Buddhism and uh, uh, this go back to the 7th century and uh, uh, okay, th 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 this is uh, not, uh, I'm not explaining to everyone, this is how the Japan's in the 6th century and uh, with Buddhism that uh, uh, culture and philosophy of India introduced to Japan and uh, in our little history, first person, Indian person visited Japan is this person uh, his name is Bodhisena. Those days, we Japan had direct uh, contact, direct relation with China, but we didn't have uh, any direct contact with India. So nobody in Japan knew about India directly. Only through the Chinese literature, Chinese women material, we didn't, especially those related to the media. So. Those days, our people, ancestors, wanted to learn Buddhism directly from person from India. And they found this Buddhist in China. And when they go to Chinese teacher, also ask this Indian Buddhist monk, the Buddhist to come to Japan. And he became the first Indian person visited Japan. It was early 8th century. And actually, he Open. It's a grand ceremony. Grand ceremony of that the Bodhi. When you visit Japan and visit Nara, most of people visit the Bodhi uh, temple. This is a famous temple for big Buddha. And actually, the eye-opening ceremony of this big Buddha was carried out by the Bodhisena. And in a previous. Uh, uh, now, this one, the, this appointment, uh, that one is the uh, Emperor Shomu. And beside the Emperor Shomu is Bodhisena. And actually, together is uh, Japan's most uh, respected monster, Arpon. You mean how we respected this person, Bodhisena? Because the same group is the same girl. This, same, this, this show, and also this picture mainly that uh, later in the 12th century, but to those people, I'm talking about perception, how Japan uh, regarded India, true Buddhism. And also say that we also introduced that to this system uh, uh, that from India, and we made our alphabetical order in accordance with so and uh, the next. So with this Buddhism, Actually, Indian world uh, came to Japan. This is a, uh, actually the uh, uh, art part of how we, we 
similarity of the uh, uh, wall painting that is OUD. OUD is one of the oldest temperature plant and the Ajanta. And naturally, this uh, angle is very similar. So we definitely believe that uh, we are influenced by the Pentagon. And also, those days, the wisdom of uh, uh, most of the Indian gods came to Japan. The, those gods came as a Galatian god for, for Buddha. Protecting Buddha, they came to Japan. And all those uh, Buddha, we have Japanese names. For example, Indra, we call Aishakten, and Brahma, we call Onten. So today, if you see uh, this Japan, very famous, not on, uh, initially those gods are with Buddha, okay, in the same temple. But nowadays, even you can have that the uh, Saraswati temple in Japan, we go to the end and some very popular. And uh, I shall tell that Indra uh, temple, only Indra was those temple also there. So those days from Japan, the world is Japan and you know, China and India. So India is known as since came uh, where Buddha born and grown up and preaching and everything. So uh, India was regarded as a heavenly place. So we call the tangible. So in those days, perception of Germany, the world means Japan, China, India. Okay? So and admiration towards India continued. So actual relation, physical contact, was very there in until very recently. Okay, and this, so although it's a government double, but uh, in the early 20s that uh, those intellectuals visited each other. So this uh, uh, strengthened this cultural link or spiritual uh, admiration. One is that uh, this I'm always mentioned about Kokagura because in the past Japanese those days Japan just opened up to, to, to opening our country, Western country. And Japanese say, okay, we have to catch up the Western world. Learn from West, learn from West, okay? Everything okay. All the uh, uh, steam engine and everything, mainly science thing. We try to study from Western country, but Kokagura said, no, we have to study, we have to. More uh, cultural, spiritual side of our identity, of those kinds. So he, he also studied about China and also India and came to India in 2019. Uh, Actually, he came to India to invite Swami Vivekananda to Japan. To, he wanted to have a religious conference in Japan, but the, uh, some some of was not so well at that. So instead, but he could introduce to the Tagore family and uh, uh, his association with uh, the Tagore family continued till he died in 1918. And through this Okakura, uh, actually many Japanese painters visited India and interacted with the Indian painters like Dagananda and Tagore or was so, so many venerable uh, painters, but uh, those, uh, and of course Tagore visited Japan. Of course Tagore visited various countries, but Tagore visited Japan five times from 1916 to 1929, and visited various places, and really, if I start talking about Rabindranath Tagore, oh, I can go to two hours, three hours, but just today is go next. So the, through this uh, interaction that the uh, cultural or spiritual thing was, yeah, and those days, economic side, when we see, Japan was about to, wanted to modernize our country, to check out Western country, and okay, uh, unfortunately later on we and the military is coming up, but uh, those days we tried uh, our economy by creating the industrial base and we chose that, uh, the cotton industry. And initially, very beginning, 
uh, late 19th century, we imported the garment goes from uh, the, the UK. Okay. So 40% of our import uh, from UK is done. But we thought we should make cotton. Well, although in Japan, the uh, ship industry was there, not industry, ship production was there, but to cotton was not because we don't grow cotton. But uh, we found cotton, that's why we imported a lot of cotton products. But we thought we have to produce. So what what we do, import cross from India and stitching and final one. And then we imported thread from India and we and and finally we started importing cotton and to both then and to produce and started export, not only our domestic consumption but we started importing to so which strengths or made Japan's uh, economic growth in the war period and made it up to casual era. Those days then to, to uh, 1905, we're talking about the Japan uh, won the war in Russia was something. But in those days, the, the economic base was done by this uh, cotton industry. And this cotton industry, only because we could, we could trade with India, the cotton trade with India, made a <coughs> Modernization of Japan possible. Like this way, after Second World War, recovery, everyone is talking about the oh, miracle of Japan after Second World War, from the ashes to the Yukona, but it only was possible through the iron and the iron ore trade. Actually, we started big iron from India even before the war, and we made the final steel product. But uh, after the war, First, we started again the iron from India and made the iron product. Then we started uh, importing iron ore from Japan and not only steel industry and steel industry naturally go for that. Those cow, most of the things uh, that we need are uh, uh, iron products. So uh, our post war development is fully depend on this iron. Iron and iron ore uh, trade with India. <coughs> so the economy side also in modern era we are fully uh, actually we are grateful our development is only done with the trade with India. And uh, this is something different. When we see Japan's relation with Asia, sometimes this bit ambivalent or Sometimes, although we are keeping very good relations with ASEAN countries, and, but uh, maybe sometimes China's case, Korea's case, and even the ASEAN countries, we have sometimes problems. Because of the history problem, we say this is a Second World War over several time. We invade it, okay? But uh, in case of India, uh, we didn't have such uh, the negative. Rather, we have the uh, positive side of that because well, this uh, two gentlemen uh, one Rush Bihari Rose and Sebastian Rose everyone knows but Rush Bihari Rose is before Sebastian Rose went to Japan to procure the arms to, for the arms structure in Japan <laughs> in India and uh, he uh, actually led the uh, Indian independence league uh, later and uh, he just together those food uh, trying to and uh, uh, actually he arrived in Japan 1915. Those days Japan was allied with UK, okay? And uh, actually there are pressure from government that the UK But some Japanese that uh, the rights they protect and uh, uh, some family uh, protected him and uh, actually uh, he married with the daughter of that family and the uh, uh, family name is Nakamuraya. Uh, even today you can enjoy the curry of Nakamuraya. <laughs> it's very famous in Shinjuku. And so uh, these are those days that uh, people in Japan supported 
people and later on Tango Wolf came to Japan from uh, Germany in uh, 1943, uh, I mean the Second World War, and uh, he led the Indian National Army. And uh, these are uh, some uh, during war thing and next one is uh, another gentleman, this is just after the war. There was, uh, was Japan defeated and Japan was uh, under occupation of Allied forces, mainly uh, uh, the uh, United States. At that time, the International Military Tribunal uh, for Far East was on, on, on mine. And uh, actually, uh, many Japanese war criminals uh, are, yes. Uh, but uh, why I mentioned that this person is very uh, well received by Germany because he was a uh, victim of the prosecution, uh, use of the legal concept of conspiracy in the context of the today war decision by Japanese officials and open that the tribunal should not disclose that degree apply the new concept of the class A war crime, that the, uh, crimes against peace and crimes against humanity. This is a totally new concept. But uh, he said that actually his decision opinion is purely uh, legal. It's not necessary he wants to just help this uh, criminal, but uh, he, he just stated uh, legally this is not, it's, it should not be just uh, decided by the winner that the uh, intention of but uh, if legally this is so but uh, we don't know uh, most of the don't know the idea but uh, just know he opened uh, that <laughs> dissident so he became very popular and these are the uh, uh, thing of the maps and then uh, it was 70 years of uh, Japanese diplomatic relations so, uh, uh, 1951, actually, uh, we signed the San Francisco Peace Treaty with 49 countries. Actually, India did India did India did Why? The reason is that uh, uh, then Prime Minister Nancy Jawaharlal thought this treaty is not to be And actually, this was not to fully recover Japan sovereignty. I don't uh, talk about uh, detail. Actually, Okinawa was probably returned to Japan later on after 20 years. That's good. And uh, so, decided we are both up. But instead, we conclude equal bilateral treaty with Japan. So, uh, the day when San Francisco Peace Treaty became effective on 28th of April, we, Japan and India extended no to establish develop, um, develop, uh, diplomatic relations and later we signed a uh, bilateral peace treaty on 9th June. This is the beginning of our diplomatic relations. And since then, now 70 years, and today uh, it's very, very, uh, I can say, very wide and deep and uh, Substantially, very, very. But uh, if we see the, the, this 70 years, not necessarily so easy. Actually, in the very beginning, it's a good time. That because the Japanese admired great admiration toward India, as I told you, and uh, so that okay, now we go with India. Yeah. So that's why the Japanese Prime Minister those days visited in India as the first destination to Asia and to Africa. It was uh, uh, next. Oh, sorry. Uh, before, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and uh, oh, which brought uh, uh, the Prime Minister Nehru to visit to Japan in '57, and we did a uh, next Prime Minister also visited India uh, just after four years. So uh, those days, uh, there are some scope, some possibility of the. Uh, Growing relations, inter Japan relations, inter Japan relations, but to after the late 60s till early 80s, uh, though our relations are very cordial and friendly, but it 
for not so mechanical growth, mainly because of the economic innovation. Because on one side, Japan focus more safety about South uh, East Asian countries, and India, uh, the, the, the economic policy is more centralized to uh, plan the economy and more limited to and in the 70s, being more toward to the uh, Soviet uh, and uh, Japan always kept that to uh, Japan, US, Hawaii, even today, and to be later on. So, uh, the, actually, I joined the foreign service, I told you, in 1983, and as a freshman, I witnessed that the uh, Prime Minister Nagasone India. That was after 24 years of the previous yes. Prime Minister's meeting. So 24 years we didn't have Prime Minister's meeting. But actually, this was a quite good visit, and he did uh, a speech in Harvard also. And then, uh, from this day, but I can tell you from in that time, our total volume, actually, Though I said we are, our economic development really depends on that the iron ore trade or cotton trade in India, but in 1984, those days, that Japan's trade with India, total volume of Japan's trade, I I don't want that total volume, but with India, it's only less than one percent of the Japanese total trade, and Japanese investment in India is only 0 0.1, less than 0 0.1 percent of Japanese investment abroad those days. So, uh, also we say it's a good relation, but uh, our economic relation was very, very So, and of course, uh, 80, now China, actually our relation with China, okay, we opened the economic relation and uh, all Japanese investment went to China. So, and only thing that uh, started changing next week is that uh, uh, 2000, actually after the uh, India's nuclear test, okay, actually India's nuclear test in 1998, this is how our relation, yeah, in late uh, uh, 1990s, to, uh, for example, 1996, I came back to India as a possibility in charge of political relation. And that only one year I received three former Prime Minister and one speaker from Japan. Okay? I, I didn't have the Prime Minister. Prime Minister was from come. But uh, uh, because of the uh, new project, we had to live for and that's after the two years of the, the uh, various other goals, we could uh, make our relation back to the track in 2000 when uh, the, of the Prime Minister Modi visited India and at that time we said now our relation is not, not only of course we have to uh, uh, strengthen our bilateral relation but to strengthen bilateral relation we need also to uh, have to dialogue more on the international global issue, yeah? because uh, we realize that the perception, for example, especially in nuclear issue, that uh, what Japan has a policy and what India has a policy, you can think we didn't have much for before the India's nuclear. But after nuclear, we have a lengthy discussion why India is quite nice. So we said that now our relation should be uh, not only focused on bilateral relations, but we also cooperate uh, on global issues. But in 2000, this is a kind of declaration and uh, actual uh, uh, development about uh, various uh, uh, Collaboration, cooperation in various sectors started last 10 years. Actually, from 2006, uh, uh, 2005, when uh, 
And it wasn't we did it then, but since 2005, every year that the either Japanese Prime Minister or Indian Prime Minister did it each year. So this made a tremendous difference in our relation. And uh, uh, from 2006, that we said, is calling our relation the global partnership, we call that the strategic and global partnership. And 2014, when that the Prime Minister uh, Modi visited Japan, we said special strategic global. But actually, if we see in 2007, we say global partnership. But it's a kind of, in my opinion, that uh, it's rather kind of declaration or a little more, less really stronger than substance. But when we see this special tradition of global power, this is not just rhetoric. Please go next. If you see that uh, uh, next please. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is uh, that uh, uh, from 2014, uh, every year that uh, again Prime Minister Modi visit and uh, Prime Minister Abe visit. Uh, the every year or other year. So not only the capital city but also other city also. This is before that the Japanese Prime Minister only visit one day, one night, like that. But uh, during uh Abe's Prime Ministership he stayed few days. It means we one day some city other than New Day and also uh Prime Minister stay in that Kyoto or like that or that is very, uh, but substantially, if you see, one is that the economic side of the Abe-san started becoming an Abe-nomic. And so that the uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi wanted to uh, make the uh, India development of economics go next. So, uh, this is the thing that how we see Japan to cooperate with next. And this depends. Okay, next. I just go through. So, uh, in this, uh, from 2014, we have a lot of. I, I said it's not just lesbian, but uh, with substance. Actually, our government government relation or business uh, relation uh, widened and deepened so much. For example, uh, in a defense area, uh, not only just uh, joint exercise like Malabar, but the uh, agreement on the transfer of defense equipment and technology. This is very, very important. Actually, before Japan had this kind of uh, uh, agreement only with the United States or Korea like that. The first time we had this Asian country, first country is India. And of course, uh, uh, the agreement is agreement. With agreement, not necessarily jumping on that uh, uh, immediate result, but uh, with this agreement, we have working uh, working group, and they are talking about the concrete project about the cooperation. And of course, uh, uh, since uh, as I told you, India has been prepared first and made our, but uh, finally we concluded the fifth rule of the nuclear energy. With that we could also operate all nuclear and also in Japanese public community that is not just because of the Indian relation or US relation but because of Fukushima that is just that nowadays public opinion is not very in favor of the atomic energy system. But anyway, we have the agreement so if uh, to sign agreed we can do the cooperation and uh, of course, in the uh, dialogue, we have various dialogues, but now we started that uh, two to two foreign minister and defense minister's meeting. Uh, first uh, ministerial level meeting has happened in 2019. And now we're going to have, uh, this time also announced that the second meeting will soon combine. And uh, in the defense side, not only transfer of defense equipment and technology, but we also uh, so called with you know outside much coming here for you, supplying the service between the self defense force of Japan and the Japan force. And uh, uh, we had 
we and we in various uh, development cooperation uh, projects in India, including the high speed railway and many uh, that uh, metros and so on. And uh, with that uh, business relation uh, expanded. Actually, uh, we wanted the Japanese business to come to India more, but uh, Whenever we ask Japanese companies to come, they always ask infrastructure. So development of infrastructure and uh, increasing uh, number of Japanese business involvement is back to back. So uh, disappointment. But uh, as the Dandrani Sun said, uh, the thing is that uh, although I told you perception wise, we had an admin, admin, admiration was here for us okay, two thousand years and uh, but actually we roughly speaking most of them they don't know about India, actually in Japan. And in India also they found very little knowledge about India. It's a common people. And I must confess, even that scars, we have many, many scars. Uh, research on China, Korea, US of course. But on India, we can count this person that person. And in India also, there are so many scholars studying on like, US relations or China, or, but on uh, Japan, I just focus on this person there, this person that we did, this person counted. Because the base is still very, very for example, before COVID, from Japan to uh, um, foreign students in Japan, from China, one lakh, from India, 1,500. Like this way, from Japan to India, the, those studying India is very limited. So we have to do And even that the visitor, tourists, from Japan to China in 2019, well, 18, 18, 18 together. Three million. Yeah. From China to Japan, six million. Of course, 19 because of various things. One million, but still one million. And two thousand. But in the COVID time now, finished. So now, after COVID, I don't know how, but uh, I'm always saying, this is rather researcher, so my main message is not this, but uh, when I talk to the Public to section or more. Uh, I always tell the three visitors are you know, huge, and I ask them to be in the middle of the So, actually, uh, what has been done that uh, uh, this uh, is now, uh, since you are interested in this uh, visit, and the Prime Minister is visit, we sent that to just uh, this week. So, uh, these are rather concept, uh, not uh, after some. What I said before is that the cooperation in this field, cooperation in this field, but this is the concept. What Japan and India today, okay? The old days we say that this is a good tradition and there is some uh, Now, today, how, why we can cooperate such strongly is that the convergence of that our basic to value and business. So that's why I quoted from this. And next one also, COVID, uh, but also uh, basically this uh, basic value is very important. So this, uh, during this year's period, what we say, the shared value of principle, what we got is the freedom, humanism, democracy, tolerance, and power. This is very more. And what do we focus or emphasize is good base of the world. Good base is that, the, uh, for example, uh, international law of sea. This is mainly, of course, uh, what China did in that this China Sea. Uh, we always say we should follow the truth. Once you agree, okay, I'm not talking about uh, you are not participant. 
I'm not talking about the uh, NPP. I'm talking about the ANPRO. China is participating. China signed. You agree. You have to follow. This is the same. <laughs> and anyway, so this is the so we so that and next week. And this, uh, uh, we see on the other side that the perspective for when we see the world is also changing. Because Japan, initially, as I said, we focus on Southeast Asian countries, Ukraine, and so on, and India. And now we look to the strengthening of relations with American countries. So that's why this uh, Indo Pacific idea of the Indo Pacific is much to get the growing perception of Germany. So when uh, Prime Minister uh, Abe first time visited in India in 2007, he uh, told in the parliament that the confluence of two things, the Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean. This was a, a kind of, not, at that time he didn't go in the Pacific, but the, the, those, the intention is that we have to think not only this part, in uh, Asian Pacific, but we have to see the Indian Ocean side, including the African and so the global thing. And uh, so, uh, since this last 10 years, I'm very happy that initially there are up and down. It's sometimes it's a time that we need to go. Uh, of course, even uh, trilateral one was started gradually, I remember. And now what? So, of course, what there are various discussions, but I'm very happy to see that uh, this time, that last year also and this year, but we need that to meet again and be uh, assured that they are, uh, uh, we are firm, as I mentioned, we are firm, uh, are firm their appointment uh, to the trade of the Pacific, in the sovereignty and the integrity of all states, the respected and country community. These things are quite great, of course, and uh, as far as next week, uh, Various uh, uh, cooperation side. It's uh, one side is the perception, another side is the actual cooperation. But, and actual cooperation is that we are having been uh, very poor last two years, and during COVID time we had a cooperation through the uh, COVID vaccine. Operation. And uh, so we mentioned again that uh, this critical uh, and magic technology is now of our focus and uh, uh, infrastructure coordination we did and uh, cyber security is new one and these are practical things that we are now focusing on the cooperation. Next please. So the uh, Infrastructure Summit also we did that uh, but we did the same thing that the uh, basic principles, this is most important. Uh, though actually Ukraine and Russia thing is that uh, uh, of course uh, each country, uh, every country has their own stance, but uh, what do we can uh, take common way is that this line, is that this line is we must uh, stick to is that uh, almost the same what I said before. And the uh, uh, complete cooperation uh, area is that global web security, infrastructure, climate, cyber security, and critical and economic technology. Okay? What policy is that the first importance of the education and two space and maritime trade and the uh, economic And so,
how the currency is worth. Japan basic policy, as I told you, is uh, Japan and US alliance. This is an all of Germany. And India, how she worked. India's best policy is, I understand, I, I, I should not say most of it, but I understand is that the strategic autonomy for having a strategic relation with major areas. It means with not only with the United States, with, but also with China, with Russia, and take proper. So, in that, with that, naturally we cannot think to always face it. For example, uh, in uh, UN resolution, we have the certainty India, yeah, India, yeah, Spain, like yeah. that. This happened in a diplomacy that was very successful. But this one is that the, the basis how we see the fact. This is also, but the uh, important thing is uh, uh, both, every four country began uh, but is useful, but is important at this today's context, especially in, uh, in the Pacific in Ocean. India's uh, thing, Japan uh, is an island country, so I, we always need the sea, maritime sea. And maritime sea, but is easier. And for India also, from maritime point of view, it's fair. But India is not only Maritime ocean state, but the continent stuff, and you have to come with China. And so, I understand you have to, and to do the relation with Russia is very, very special. Special means that you have to maintain the problem. So, from that point of view, the attitude about the UN resolution or how to say to the world is different. So, we do understand because. Uh, special strategic and local partner mean that we discuss about okay if we doesn't have the bio we don't understand each other so just why don't agree with them so quite good understanding about each other policy we cannot play not like 1998 <laughs> okay so I just stop here and uh, I uh, any question and